My name is Hannibal Barca and from my exile far from Carthage I will tell you what I remember about the war that shook the foundations of almighty Rome. My role in this conflict began in Iberia after the death of my father Hamilcar when I was elected commander of the Carthaginian forces at the age of 25. In the year 219 BC we attacked the city of Saguntum because its alliance with the Romans slowed the expansion of our nation. This caused war to break out with Rome and I decided to invade Italy, eager to avenge Carthage's defeat in the First Punic War. A year later and after gathering an army of 40,000 infantry, 8,000 cavalry and 38 elephants, we crossed the Pyrenees and Gaul fighting against the natives and nature. The biggest challenge was crossing the Alps practically in winter. In the 15 days it took us, we lost almost half of the soldiers and several elephants perished. Finally we managed to enter Cisalpine Gaul, northern Italy, surprising the Romans. In November, a first confrontation took place between cavalry forces from both sides near the Ticino River, which concluded with a clear Carthaginian victory and where the Roman commander Publius Cornelius Scipio was wounded. This result encouraged multitudes of Gallic warriors to join our battered army. Scipio's army retreated to Placentia awaiting reinforcements. The legions of Sicily under the orders of the other consul, Tiberius Sempronius Longus, were sent to the north and both forces were reunited. Scipio's wounds caused the command of all the legions to fall to Sempronius. In December 218 BC, our armies were located near the Trebia River. After several skirmishes favorable to our enemies, the Roman consul was eager to enter combat. Our camp and that of the Romans were very close and I decided to attract them to a battle on a terrain chosen by me. The site was a flat, tree-free area between the Luretta and Trebia rivers where an ambush would not be expected. I ordered my brother Mago and a contingent of 1,000 cavalry and 1,000 infantry to hide in the bushes on the banks of the Trebia and to attack only at the decisive moment of the battle. The next morning, in freezing weather and light snow, I sent the Numidian cavalry across the river and attacked the Roman camp. This provocation caused Sempronius to order his cavalry to leave the camp and respond to the aggression. Seeing that the Numidians did not retreat, the Roman Velites left the camp and joined the fight. Shortly afterward, the entire Roman army set off in haste to engage in combat. Ours retreated little by little trying to attract them towards our camp. However, their enthusiasm diminished when the Romans began to cross the icy waters of the Trebia River, which also flowed very fast. Having managed to cross, Sempronius arranged his soaked and frozen army in the traditional Roman manner, the legions in the center flanked by allied infantry and cavalry on the flanks. In front of the lights, light infantry armed with javelins. It had four legions, 16,000 Roman infantry and another 20,000 allies. 1,000 Roman cavalry were located on the right wing and another 3,000 allies on the left. In total there were about 40,000 men. All this time, our men had stayed warm and fed, preparing for battle. By the time the enemy formed up for combat, our troops were already at their positions ready for the confrontation. Ahead are 6,000 harassers armed with slings and javelins. A little further back, in the center, 8,000 Gauls and on each side 6,000 Iberian and African infantry. On the flanks of the infantry the 30 elephants divided into two groups. The line was completed by 10,000 Numidian, Gaul and Iberian horsemen at the ends of the line. Our total forces were about 30,000 soldiers. Once the deployment was over, the harassers from both armies began the fight by firing their weapons.
Our men outdistanced the Roman Velites, causing Sempronius to order his men to withdraw. Meanwhile, the Carthaginian harassers fired at the Roman horsemen. At this point I ordered the flanking cavalry to attack the Roman horsemen and their allies. It soon became clear that ours were winning and the Roman cavalry fled the battlefield, pursued by ours. The Carthaginian and Roman infantry engaged in combat. The enemy had superiority in heavy infantry and the men in the center of our ranks were barely able to resist the Roman push. I ordered the African infantry and the skirmishers to attack the Romans on both flanks, exposed after the flight of their cavalry. The Roman allies, who occupied the ends of their line, found themselves surrounded and began to falter. Furthermore, at that moment Mago attacked the Roman rearguard with troops hidden in the river. The Roman Triarians tried to confront this new threat. Most of our cavalry returned from the chase and also attacked the Romans from behind. Surrounded on all sides and in the midst of heavy snowfall, the enemy was pushed towards the Trebia River. In the center, the Roman heavy infantry managed to defeat the Celtic warriors and break through their ranks, and while they were being pursued, Sempronius thought they were winning the battle. As he stopped and reorganized he realized the disaster happening around him and decided to walk away from the fight with 10,000 of his best men. The rest of the Roman army disintegrated and our elephants and horsemen killed countless enemies in their attempt to flee. Roman casualties were considerable, with about half the army killed or captured. The rest, under the command of Sempronius, managed to retreat in order towards Placentia, where they joined Scipio. When the news of the defeat reached Rome, fear took hold of the hearts of the enemy, but they soon recovered and recruited new legions, creating two independent armies to prevent our advance into the interior of Italy. In addition, they reinforced their positions in Sicily and Sardinia in anticipation of Carthaginian attacks on those territories. Meanwhile, already owners of Cisalpine Gaul, thousands of Gallic warriors continued to join our army, attracted by the loot and their desire to fight against the Romans. As it was, we prepared to spend the winter trying to gather supplies and rest for the battles that were to come.